What's going on, broskies? My name's Shivoki, and welcome back once again to another Smite God Guide. I've taken a little break from doing these due to some hard times in my life lately, but I'm doing the best I can, guys. I'm not 100% yet, but when it comes to life, I want every single one of you guys to make sure no matter what happens, you always do whatever it takes to be happy. But that's my opinion. Keep at it, guys. Life is amazing, so be amazing. Now, today, we are taking a look at an amazing goddess, and her name is Shonga. She will actually be my next diamond god, and I'm having a blast playing her lately, and she's overall just completely amazing. Now, in this guide, I'll go over her abilities and her passive. I'll also go over my typical builds for multiple situations. I'll go over situational items, who she counters, and also who counters her, and much, much more. Now, first, let's take a look at her passive and abilities. Now, Shonga's passive is called Jade Rabbit, a fantastic one, most definitely. Now, Shonga can purchase or sell items from anywhere on the map because of her Jade Rabbit. When the rabbit reaches the store and then returns, the transaction completes. Only one item can be purchased or sold in this way at a time. Now, Shonga also gains a 25% increased movement speed bonus with no backpedal penalty when using her dances. So when she's dancing, guys, she's a lot more agile, super fluid and moving. She's one of my favorite gods when it comes to juking abilities, being really, really annoying almost. You can go around them, juke everything. I literally have a hard time dying when I play her because she's so good at moving around and the bunny is so important, guys. If you can purchase something, please do so. This is why she's so strong in the solo lane because she doesn't have to leave. She doesn't even need teleport, really. Just keep, play safe. Get her early level, level gain, be aggressive when you have to, of course, but purchase your items away from the store, give yourself an amazing ability to be really aggressive and also just never have to leave lane, really. So it's a really, really cool ability, guys. I love her passive. It's definitely one of the coolest and unique ones in the game. Now, her number one is called Crescent Moon Dance, a very awesome ability. It hits pretty freaking hard and is overall really, really cool. Now, Shanga flings a Crescent Moon that hits all units in its arc dealing damage to all enemies in its path. Now the ability type of course is an arc ability. The damage starts at 80 and maxes out at 240 plus 60% of her magical power. So this is definitely her main damage ability. It hits really hard, great for lane clear. Now personally, I don't believe she has the best lane clear early game. She has kind of a problem with it in my opinion. So I definitely recommend if you're in mid lane of going soul stone, which I will cover later in, the, later in the video, but overall the late game damage on this guys, when she gets stacks online is a very, very high amount of damage. And the mana cost starts at 60 and maxes out at 80. So a very low mana cost with only a five second cooldown so a little bit of cooldown you will have to ability up almost every three seconds a very strong ability my main thing with this is, is use it on as many people as you can and make sure if you're clearing your lane come from the side if you're on the side of the lane you can clear the entire way with one swipe of it so a very very cool ability that's called crescent moon dance Oh, I love her number two so, so much, guys. It's called Moonlit Waltz. Chonga performs an invasive spin dance, unable to be hit for one second. For each tick of damage from an ability that she avoids, Chonga restores mana to herself and her allies. Now, this ability is absolutely amazing. Not only is it great from getting CC immune, because it is a CC immune, so basically if an Ares comes in and blinks and ults everybody, you can easily get out of it. But it's also a great way to restore mana if you're having a hard time doing so. In lane or in a team fight, if you have running low on mana and you see a raw going for an ult and he ults go ahead and stand in that shit but pop the moonlight waltz and guess what you got some mana back so a really really cool thing i absolutely love this ability the mana restore guys starts at 20 and max out at 60 per tick of avoided damage which is a fuck ton of mana and the mana cost of this ability is 60 so overall you'll be getting the mana back and even more and the cooldown guys starts at 20 seconds and max out at 12 seconds towards the very end so definitely i don't love this ability at all until the very end but it's still a very great ability. With a little bit of cooldown, this ability will save your ass so many times that allows her to be very agile due to her passive with the 25% increased movement speed thing. So it's very important to make sure you're dancing quite often because you move faster with every single one of your dances. That's her first ability, her second ability, and her third ability are all basically dances. They are really awesome, so keep that in mind. Now, Shunga is one of my favorite healers in the game because she has the ability to heal quite often and quite a lot, but she also has the ability to hit really freaking hard and completely 100 to zero somebody with no issue whatsoever. Now, her number three is called Moonflower Dance. Shunga twirls scattering flowers around her, which heal herself and all nearby allies while damaging nearby enemies as well. Now, her Moonflower Dance also reduces the healing of all nearby enemies. Now, many people seem to forget that. It's so important in team fights. If you have the ability to be safe and go, to, go into a team fight and pop this, it's actually a reduction to healing, a 50% reduction to healing, which is so big. It's an insane and amazing ability. I leveled a second because 
they go for the one first, but if you're going a more support build, you can definitely go for this. It's a great heal and it's a decent amount of damage and also is 50% healing reduction. So the healing guy starts at 50 um, and goes up to 130 plus 40% of your magical power. You're also looking at a damage of 65 and it max out at 165 plus 30% of your magical power. So not, not as, as a hard as a hit, but it still hits pretty hard. You know, the healing reduction, like I said, is a 50% healing reduction with a radius of 30. And don't forget, once you use this ability, she has the ability to backpedal 25% faster than anyone else. It's a very, very great passive and a great ability as well. Now the cost, guys, starts at 60 and max out at 80 mana, which is not that bad with only a 10 second cooldown. So once again, a little bit of cooldown, she's good to go. Have you ever wanted to kill the entire enemy team or at least stun them and destroy their souls while looking very beautiful? Guess what? Waxy Moon is the way to do so. Shanga's ultimate is absolutely amazing. Shanga's Waxing Moon dance is captivating. With this dance, dealing damage and stunning enemy gods in front of her. Each subsequent god that is stunned is stunned for longer. So if you hit someone in the front, guys, it hits someone in the back, and it hits them in the back, and hits another person behind her, it's just an insane amount of a stun, guys. It's insane. So you get a one second stun plus one second for each god already stunned. So if you hit five gods in a row, guess what? It's a five second stun, basically. It's like a six second stun. It's disgusting. It's a long stun. It's really good for team fights, and it also hits really, really hard, guys. The damage starts at 160 and max out at 460 plus 7. 70% of her magical power. Now the cost guy starts at 80 and max out at 120 with only a 90 second cooldown. So you're looking at a little bit of cooldown, getting it every basically every minute. It's a great, great ultimate. It hits really hard and it helps her z literally 100 to zero somebody with zero issue. It also a great ability to uh, kind of chase someone down because it has a really long radius, a very, very long range. It's a line ability, of course. It has a long range. It also helps you really get away, engage with somebody, and also, like I said, 100 to 0 somebody with no issue. And it's a great team fight changer. If you get a crazy team fight or they're going for the gold theory, you throw this in there. It's a huge stun, huge damage, and it can definitely allow your team to go in there and eradicate the entire enemy team. Now, this is how I level her abilities every single time, no matter what. Unless maybe I'm going support build, I might go for the three first, but normally, almost 100% of the time, I go for this way. I level the one first, the three second. And then I go for the two at the very last, of course, with the ultimate whenever I can. The ultimate hits hard. It's very important to level it whenever you can. Of course, max out that one first. Your one should be done by level 10. So go ahead and pause it here, guys. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments down below. Now, the reason I love Shanga is because she has the ability to be whatever the fuck she wants to be, which is how I am. I, I want to be whatever the fuck I want to be. I want to do what I want to do. And that's what she does. She can be a support. She can be a solo. She can be a mid. She can be a jungle. She can do whatever the fuck she wants to do. And she does good at all things. Now, this right here is my typical mid lane build. I go for cooldown boots. Book of Toth, Obsidian Shard, Chronos Pendant, Ratsuhuti, and Spear of Desolation. Now this is, of course, if I don't need any situational items, this is the perfect build in my mind. A great damage, great cooldown, great penetration, and of course, a really, really strong overall build, and I love it. Now if I'm not going this route, and I'm going maybe a, a, the, uh, the solo lane route, this is what I go right here. I go for pen boots, and usually I go against a warrior. And when I go against a warrior, I want Breastplate of Valor. I want the stacks going. I want that, that Book of Toth. I want that Chronos Pendant. I want a little bit of better penetration. And of course, I want Rod to Hootie because it's such an amazing item. Now, this is my typical build. Of course, if I'm, if I'm not going against someone who is a warrior and I don't need the defense, I won't go Breastplate of Valor. But of course, that's my situational item. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going against an Osiris or an Odin or a Bologna, and I'm going to want that defense early off because I'm going to need it, but I also go pen boots because I can't really find a spot in there to go pen that's really smart because when it comes to solo lane you really want to be you want to, you want to build that snowballs you want to build that you can basically buy something and then just keep going and never stop and with Shanga's amazing passive this allows her to buy things that aren't too expensive but overall have a really strong build now if I'm not going solo lane I'm going support and this is how I build her I go of course with cooldown boots book of top obsidian shard and then I go for lotus crown and Rod of Sepolis. Of course, a little bit of penetration at the end cannot hurt you. It's a great item, a huge amount of power, and Spear Desolation overall is absolutely amazing. So I love all three of these builds. Any questions, guys, please ask in the comments down below, and also let me know how do you play Shanga. I have about one to three typical start builds I always use, and this is basically how I start every single game. But normally, I go Soul Stone, level one shoes, four mana pots, and four health pots. And if I'm not doing that, of course, I'm going a, a more safe route, which is Vampiric Shroud. Of course, a little bit of health will help me a lot there. And I still do the boots, the four health pots, and the four mana pots. And if I'm not doing this and I want to rush a little more damage, I might rush stacks early off. I might go early Book of Toth or early Warlock stash, but that's just me personally. Now, when it comes to relics that Shanga is really good with using, it's definitely Sanctuary Sprint Purification Beads 
and meditation. I personally love every single one of these and they all have a great reason. Of course, if you need the sanctuary, go ahead and get it. If you want sprints so you can chase people down or run away as a team or just be very aggressive, sprints a great choice. Purification beads, if you need it, if there's a lot of CC and you don't think you're too alone will help you, go ahead and grab that. But one of my favorites is getting is meditation. I love grabbing meditation for middle lane. I love grabbing it for support. I even sometimes grab it for solo lane so I can stay in lane even longer. It's a great ability and actually plays really well for passive because it allows her to stay in lane a lot longer. It allows her to basically use that bunny and make him run his little bunny ass off all day long. It's a fantastic thing, but surely whatever works for you guys, when it comes to relics, do what you need to do to survive. Now this shit right here, these are my situational items. And once again, situational items are only for situational things. If you don't need them, don't buy them. Please guys, understand that. Now the two helmets are there, are great cheap forms of protections. The other one really helps me a lot against critical hits and also gives you her, her a 40 power boost if she gets hit by a critical hit. And of course, she'll take zero damage for it from it, but still she gets a big boost so it helps a lot if she maybe she's a support player it's a great item to grab if you have a hunter going for crit now breastplate of valor is one of my favorite ones for her it actually works really well because she does so great with cooldown because she has kind of low cooldowns on her ability so this helps even more to have a little more cooldown of course that defense if you need it bancroft's talent is a fantastic one for her if she's low health and she'll get a huge spike of damage and she'll be able to survive a lot more. And it's definitely a little bit nice of a, a item there. Now Pythagorean's Peace is one of my favorites, honestly, because it allows her to be really um, helpful for her allies, but also a good spike of damage for not too much money. And Lotus Crown, of course, is great for the heal shield. You heal, you get a nice shield. It's pretty cheap and also really nice uh, power on there and overall a great item. Now, of course, there are different ones you can, you can go for, but these are my typical top five situational items. Now, when it comes to gods that Shangha is good against and bad against, there are quite a few. Now, god I think she's bad against are Agni, Habwa, Bastet, Serket, and Bakasura. The reason I say that is for any god who can stick onto her really easily will definitely fuck her up. Habwa has high damage, he's really annoying. Agni has multiple stuns and high damage. Bastet has those kitties and a really high amount of bleed damage, which is super scary. Serket is just a fucking bitch, basically a scorpion bitch. And Bakasura, no one likes Bakasura, but it also is ultimate definitely counter her 100%. Now, also, Ganshi's really good against are Aphrodite, Loki, Shock, Hell, and Ares. Of course, Ares is really a simple given one. She can two out of his ultimate, basically, really, really easy. Hell is the same thing. Basically, Hell can go in there, she can two out of that. Shock can pop his ultimate, she can two out of that. Loki can do what the fuck he wants to do, and he can two out of that. And also, I think a big counter is Thanatos. In this guide, you might have saw me completely fuck up with Thanatos, where he wouldn't do his ultimate. He landed down on top of me, but I popped my two, and I turned around and killed him with my one. Literally, anyone you can see coming, a Thor, a Thanatos, someone has a really readable ultimate, you can definitely count on them whatsoever. Now, Aphrodite is also a great one because she can stop healing. Her three stops healing by 50%, a huge reduction on healing. So overall, I love Shangla. She's fantastic. Definitely, of course, any item that stops healing is also a big count on her. So keep that in mind. Now, guys, that's it for the God Guide. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. It really helps, guys. Also, comment down below what you thought of the God Guide. Let me know how I did. And also, what God needs a guide next? Guys, you're all so amazing. We're all mouse. We're almost at so many subs. We're almost at 14K subs. 20K is right there. I'm so proud of us, guys. We're doing so good. Thank you all for the support, for the love. You're all amazing. I have a great one. I hope you had a great one. And as always, my friends, subscribe for more amazing content from Nebroski Shiboki. Do some motherfuckers. Do sales. Ah.